Hello YouTube, I apologize for my extended absence. I've been away due to term papers and studying for exams, but I wanted to take a quick break and address the whole thing surrounding Grand Theft Auto being taken off Target shelves in Australia. So, um, the name pretty much says it all. Grand Theft Auto V, completely off the shelves at Target, no longer being sold, because two women and a bunch of people on Change.org signed this petition that says it encourages men to be violent towards women and sexualizes them while also linking the sexualized nature of women to violence against women. Hmm, where have we heard these claims before? Let's get the obvious shit out of the way first. So for any of you in my audience who've actually played Grand Theft Auto V, all of you, and I really do fucking mean all of you, will be able to tell anyone who hasn't played Grand Theft Auto V and pretty much every other Grand Theft Auto game that it's not sexist. At all. Like, yeah, it's violent, yeah, it's crude. Some people say it takes things way too far. But one thing you cannot say is that it's that it's biased against one gender. There's no way when you can do pretty much almost anything in these games. I don't know if old people realize this, but Grand Theft Auto is not torture porn. At least not entirely dedicated to torture porn. First and foremost, it's a sandbox game, which means you can do anything you want within the confines of the game, pretty much, and, and that could be anything from doing yoga to beating up a bunch of hookers or running people over with any car that you want. And if you really want to go with the rhetoric of sexualized violence, there's a part in the game, I think the main story campaign, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Trevor's story campaign, where you as the main protagonist, you take two electrical clamps, clamp them to a guy's balls, and electrocute him to torture him. So, um, yeah, nothing like that was done to women in Grand Theft Auto, and yet you see these people getting their panties in a twist. Yeah, no double standards there, right? This is a game where you can literally jack someone's car, run them over with it, run through, like, billions of red lights, um, crash your car into a building, beat up a bunch of cops, and pretty much destroy an entire city. And this, this is what they decide to nitpick? Like, them priorities. Oh, and uh, did I mention that there hasn't been any, like, link between violence in video games, or even sexism in video games, for that matter, to violence and sexism in real life? But while we're on the topic of video games and violence in real life, I wanted to discuss the finer details of why I think we need games like GTA, and why I think it's important that we continue to have games available to us. And and this is no matter how controversial they are, as long as they don't break the law, like as long as they're not advocating child pornography or, or anything like that, I think it is important that these games have a purpose, that often violence in video games is a necessary thing. And sometimes, yes, it may be senseless violence, but even that has its place in society. I'd first like to say that even before the advent of electronic media, violence has always been a part of society. Even in children's books, violence has been a thing. So it's not like you can eradicate violence entirely. You can't censor society from a part of being human. So it's pointless to try and remove GTA because it might be violent, and it might encourage people to be violent. Well, so does violent movies. So does violent stories. Um, and you don't see people getting into a hissy fit about that, now do you? Oh, but it's not interactive, you might say. It, it doesn't involve you picking up a controller and, and physically capping someone in the head. Well, uh, let me ask you, do you know what the difference is between capping someone in Grand Theft Auto versus shooting someone in real life. 
yeah, do you know the difference between holding a controller and holding a handgun? Most sane people understand the difference between fantasy and reality. And in the realm of fantasy, anything goes. And yes, that includes even the darkest and most heinous things that society tends to condemn. I think it's perfectly healthy for people to express these violent tendencies in various media, in artwork, in, in music, in um, games, you know, whatever floats your boat. And these are very healthy and very normal ways to express things that are normally considered socially deviant. And if you think that makes me a monster, that I have these violent tendencies and that I, and I exercise them through a video game, then um, what, what about rape fantasies, for example? Both men and women fantasize about getting raped or potentially even raping someone. Doesn't mean they actually want to do it in real life, but in the realm of fantasy, in the realm of role play, in, in the realm of fan fiction, these things are permissible. And I, I argue that they are healthy for a person's psyche. Um, as long as most sane people, most mature people, understand the difference between fantasy and reality, what is permissible and what is not, then in the realm of fantasy, anything goes. And I realize that a lot of people, younger people in particular, may not be able to comprehend the distinction between what is acceptable in fantasy versus what is acceptable in reality. That's why we have ratings. That's why young people can't buy Grand Theft Auto V, because they don't understand the meaning of violence. They don't understand what purpose it serves. And that violence is not something to be encouraged, per se, but it is something to be acknowledged. It is something to be recognized. It is a part of society. It is innate to a certain extent that we do all have violent tendencies and that this is a healthy way to express it and that expressing these violent tendencies in real life will always get you in trouble. So people may not understand that and for that reason I recognize that sometimes this game and other games like Grand Theft Auto V may not be for you. But why should that come at the expense of everyone else who is of sane mind and who understands the difference between fantasy and reality? Why does that mean that the rest of consumers don't get what we want? Now, I recognize that some people may be mentally ill. It may very well be the case that Grand Theft Auto V may encourage their violence tendencies. But that is not a proper justification for banning the game. That is not the problem of the government or even corporations, I would argue. That is the consumer's issue. And that is for consumers to decide. Just because some mentally deranged individuals may get their hands on this game and it may encourage them to act out in a violent way, it doesn't mean you have to punish the rest of us normal, sane-minded consumers from enjoying the product. You don't ban cars and alcohol just because some people might get drunk and go driving, right? And finally, to all my critics who are saying, why are you making such a big deal out of not being able to buy a game? Or like, oh, why do you need Grand Theft Auto V? You don't need it, do you? But that's not the right type of question you should be asking in a free society. In a democratic society, the question isn't, why should you have it? It's, why should you not have it? Why should I not have Grand Theft Auto V? I think it's fun. I think it's fun to play violent video games. It's my hobby. Do you ask a guy who collects stamps or, like, weapons why they need those things? No, it's because they're, it, they like these things, and they can't justify it any more than it's fun. And, you know, if that's not a good enough justification for you, then too bad. Why I want to buy Grand Theft Auto and enjoy it is my business, not yours. Stop trying to push your dogma and, and your personal issue 
with the game onto everyone else, especially us, the responsible consumer. It is none of your business if we buy these games. If you personally take issue to them, if you don't like these games, then don't buy them. Don't play them. Don't let your kids play them. But don't interfere with everyone else's freedom. Don't interfere with their private interest to enjoy these games. May the truth always be heard. Peace.